My name is Neil Hansen and I've served a four month prison sentence for my beliefs in animal rights. What they do not appear to be able to uh, uh, obtain by argument with our industry or for that matter other industries, they are trying to obtain by sheer uh, methods which are nothing short of terrorism. My name is David Barr. I went to prison for three years for animal rights activities. I planted an incendiary device in our fur department. The people who are doing that have lost the main principle of animal rights, and that is to avoid suffering cruelty and death. They're risking it, and that's not animal rights at all. Firebombs, high explosives and guns have all been used this year by animal rights extremists. Tonight, World in Action investigates the growing violence of the Animal Liberation Front. And lot number 13, carry on with these, carry on here at 23 then. 23 on these, two is bid them 50, 22, 53, 50, 23, 50 now. 23, no, three is there, 23 is there, 23 and going. And lot number 18, carry on... A fur auction at the Hudson's Bay Fur Company in London. They've been here for 300 years and made London the centre of the international fur trade. But now the Hudson's Bay Fur Company is pulling out of Britain. 20 pound now, 20 the bid, the bid is 20, 50, 20, 50 now, 20, 50 the bid, all done at 20, 50. Fur trade, death trade, fur trade, death trade, fur trade, death trade. The great majority of protests against the fur trade are legal, but increasingly some are substituting violence for reasoned argument. The Hudson's Bay closure comes in the wake of an escalating campaign of violence by animal rights extremists. A high street firebomb campaign across the country earlier this year left one department store gutted and several others badly damaged. Tonight, World in Action reveals the full extent of the devastation caused by a bizarre and increasingly violent underground movement, the self-styled Animal Liberation Front. World in Action was invited by an anonymous caller to interview these four disguised men who claim to be Animal Liberation Front activists responsible for this year's campaign. They refused a challenge to identify themselves and an interview was recorded. The Independent Broadcasting Authority considered that the recording might be in breach of the Broadcasting Act relating to incitement to crime. Given this restriction, an actor reads their responses to our questions. We're a small cell of the Animal Liberation Front. The Animal Liberation Front is a national organisation which carries out illegal acts to rescue animals and to cause financial hardship to those who abuse animals. Why don't you take off your balaclavas? Wouldn't that be the ultimate act of courage and bravery? No, because I can't. I cannot rescue animals while I'm doing five years in prison, which is what would happen. I, I prefer to take off my balaclava. I prefer to expose myself as an average person on the street and look you in the eye and speak to you like. I don't really want to threaten in this outfit, but I'm forced to take these measures because if I expose my identity, the corrupt legal system would imprison me for my views. Nobody's forcing you to plant firebombs in stores though, are they? They are. The people that abuse animals are. We're forced to take those measures in order to stop animals being abused the way they are. Now, McDonald's has become caught up in the ALF's escalating campaign of violence. Four of its restaurants have been firebombed this year. Their crime, in the eyes of the extremists, selling meat. Over the last few years, we've almost, we've almost, up to this point, decimated the fur trade. It'll be gone in a few years' time in this country. Big businesses like the meat industry will follow. Vivisection will certainly topple. Blood sports are going to go. But ultimately, you're undemocratic and you're prepared to break the law. Isn't that the case? There is no democracy as far as animals are concerned. It doesn't exist. Animals don't come into the democracy. But the fact is, every other political movement, if it seeks to gain support, if it's a mature political movement, will do so through ordinary law-abiding methods. You seem to reject that. Isn't that a very extreme, even fascist kind of behaviour? It doesn't work. We can't operate within the law because the law doesn't work for animals. The animal rights movement draws support from across the social spectrum. More and more people are joining the legitimate campaigns against vivisection, factory farming, blood sports and all other forms of supposed animal abuse. But others have given up marching and are now taking a different road.
These are the so-called activists. To some, they're a group of harmless, if misled, animal lovers. To others, they're a growing menace. In the last 10 years, the Animal Liberation Front has caused more than 25 million pounds worth of damage and had more than 130 supporters jailed. A survey carried out this summer revealed that one in five of Britain's young people now claim to support the ALF's extreme methods. Officially, the, the ALF does not exist. It's run by uh, close-knit cells. They don't look to anybody for any orders. Uh, and everything's done from their own close-knit community. Uh, if, if you've got, say, two or three cells in one city and all kept separate, one cell doesn't know another cell, then obviously it's going to be a lot more secure. And the only way it can be busted is for somebody to actually get caught or one of the cell members to, to turn and inform to the police. Kevin Baldwin and Julie Rogers say they are no longer ALF activists. But they're both ALF veterans who've served time for their part in the 1985 firebomb attack on Rackham, the Sheffield branch of the House of Fraser. The store's crime, selling fur coats. It starts off with just criminal damage to the windows, using hammers. Hopefully, economic sabotage, insurance is going to go up, and, uh, and, it, and it did work up to 1985-86. Uh, there's only one first shot left in Sheffield now. They kept replacing windows, and uh, so we went on to etching fluid, which was a lot better. You could etch to 30, 1,000 pound windows in the space of 10 minutes. And once that didn't work, it developed into a sending device. Rackham's always maintained that uh, they would carry on selling furs as, uh, as they as long as they could and would not bow down to what they call terrorist tactics. So it, Rackham's was an obvious choice uh, to hit against fur trade. How would you feel if somebody had been hurt or even killed as a result of that fire? The only fire there was was a small fire which was contained to a, a city. Uh, it was smoke damage that caused all the, the damage to the stock. I would personally, I would not take part in any action that was going to harm any life, human or animal. The authorities had a different opinion. After a massive police operation in Sheffield, Kevin Baldwin and the rest of his ALF cell were rounded up. Britain's biggest Animal Liberation Front trial began in tight security at the city's Crown Court in the summer of 1987. The trial judge himself received a letter bomb after handing down the heaviest sentences ever given for animal rights crimes. Ten people were sent to prison. Ronnie Lee, the founder of the ALF, received a ten-year sentence. The police believed they'd put the ALF out of business for good. I think the number of incendiary device attacks on department stores and other establishments since the trial has proved that the ILF is now stronger than it ever has been. It's done more damage in the last couple of years than it has since its existence. Um, it's formed 20 years or more ago. So I think the, uh, the state, if they thought they were going to crush the ILF by handing out sentences such as that, they've been, uh, they've been disappointed. To be honest, I found it better in those days when I could debate the likes of Ronnie Lee in public, things like that, and we could discuss what the hell was happening. Now that it's been forced by overreaction by the authorities, it's been forced totally underground, and whereas people would take the risk of being arrested and go to jail for a year or two by breaking into laboratories, removing information, removing animals, now it could be ten years for that. It's easier and safer for them to burn and run, and that's what they're doing. The roots of the Animal Liberation Front lie here in Hunt Sabotage. For many dedicated activists, being a saboteur gives the first taste of law-breaking. In, uh, in the early 60s, this was considered such a radical move, trespassing. It, it played such a, a revolutionary move, really, in the animal rights movement. It made us sit up and take account of what we're doing. We've got to take direct action. It's no good waiting for anyone else to do it. I'm here today, but I'm not going to depend on these other people. I'm here today for myself. I'm going to actually take part in saving animals' lives. Take four, King. Don't get in hell, bloody way. They can't leave it! Who's touching him? Who's touching him? They can't leave it! Sean Curtin says he's a former Animal Liberation Front activist. He served two years in prison for offences which included raiding a laboratory, desecrating a huntsman's grave and threatening a fur shop owner. He's totally unrepentant. He refuses to accept that arson is a serious crime and believes that the growing ALF incendiary campaign is not only justified but is also non-violent. It's a, a non-violent piece of direct action. The, the devices you're talking about, the 
built into a little cigarette pack. They're designed to go off at night to produce some smoke, to set the sprinkler systems off. They're not designed to burn down stores at all. The only stores that have been burned down, Debenhams in Luton, Dickens and Jones in Milton Keynes, Dingles in Plymouth, they had faulty sprinkler systems. You can imagine if they had a fire in the middle of the day, they didn't have sprinkler systems. Stores it? burnt to the ground, but you say that's non-violent. No, they weren't designed to burn to the ground. The fact is, the, the, the activists intended for some smoke bombs to go off. The result was the stores were burnt down. Now, that could have ended a loss of life. But that wasn't planned. You'd presume that a place like, uh, but you're a saying company like well House planned. of Fraser, the House of Fra you, you would have to presume, really, that they have a safe sprinkler system, wouldn't you? Well, how can you it's a crime that, that these, st these stores haven't. The belief that it's right to plant incendiaries as long as people are not harmed is fundamental to the ALF. In an attack at Christmas, firebombs were placed in eight stores around the country. Three in London, in Howells of Cardiff, Manchester's Kendall Milne, Rackham's in Birmingham, Liverpool's Lewis's and Dingle's in Plymouth. The campaign caused millions of pounds worth of damage. Bombs were also sent through the post to a scientist and a fur magazine. How do you possibly think that placing incendiaries in stores is going to win over public support? What about a mother bringing her children into a store where you placed an incendiary? Would she understand your cause? We don't intend to gain public support. That's not what the organisation's about. The political organisations work for public support. We work to cause hardship to those that are harming animals, to rescue animals from those people. Despite their losses, High street businesses don't want to publicly acknowledge how serious the campaign is. Neither do government departments, chemical companies, universities or the police forces we've approached. Since Christmas, the House of Fraser have quietly closed all but one of their fur departments. But the management don't want to talk about it. They pulled out of an interview with us on police advice. So the fur department has stopped? Yes, there's no more furs, no mm -hmm. more real furs, only imitation furs. <laughs> The legitimate national organisations reject the claim that firebombs are beating the fur trade. They say a well-organised campaign and slick advertising led by this disturbing David Bailey commercial has turned the public against fur. The fur industry is closed down simply because fur is no longer fashionable. People know that fur isn't fun. They know the cruelty involved. And it's, if you like, softer groups like ours who are putting out the leaflets and the literature and the groups that are getting the posters up and the cinema adverts. OK, the liberationists have got a part to play. It's not as big as they'd like to make out. It is a part, but it's not as big as they make out. The public are against fur now because they know about it, and they don't know about it simply when people burn in shops. For small furriers, the growing number of individual attacks is even more frightening. Paul Helfgott runs a small fur business in Notting Hill. He was working in his front shop one morning recently when three smartly dressed men came in. One of them produced what appeared to be a gun, told me to stand perfectly still and not to try any heroics, asked me whether we were being videoed, which I advised him that we were, and where the rest of the staff were, and then they proceeded to put two bombs downstairs and two bombs upstairs and those bombs turned out to be smoke bombs. What effect has the attack had on you and also your business? Well, the effect it had upon myself is that, I, as the police have warned me, I will have after effects, which I did have. I cannot sleep as well as I used to, and obviously anybody which comes into a premises, I cannot help but view with extreme suspicion, not knowing what their motives may be. Now, these people are definitely anti-establishment and they are putting and forcing their ideas upon us uh, by if what they do not uh, obtain by argument, they are trying to enforce by uh, terrorism. Uh, it is nothing else but. The active ALF cell we met rejects the terrorist tag. Undeterred by the threat of prison, these men continue to carry out their increasingly violent campaigns. I think the animal abusers now should start to accept that it's taken a long time for us to reach that sort of level. Nobody's ever been injured.
They're lucky to have got off with what they have got off with. And they're causing massive suffering to animals, and all we're doing is destroying their property. When you said they're lucky to get out away with it, that came over as very threatening and possibly intimidating. Is there not a real undertone of violence to everything that you get up to? None at all. None whatsoever, by virtue of the fact that since 1976, when the Animal Liberation Front was formed, no human or animal has ever been harmed through our actions. We've only destroyed property. Their claims of non-violence were exposed as a complete lie earlier this year. Firebombs were planted in four McDonald's restaurants around the country. They were all packed with customers at the time. This new wave of attacks was claimed by an Animal Liberation Front offshoot, the Animal Rights Militia. Is McDonald's a soft target? Because it's so open, so easy to... It is nowadays because of the increasing security on vivisection labs and fur farms. Vivisection labs were probably uh, the prime targets at one bit, but more security has been pushed into all labs um, because of the more arrests of uh, activists getting into labs. Uh, the LF has had to change its tactics and go after softer targets. So McDonald's probably is an easier target, yeah. A well-coordinated attack on two animal research laboratories near Edinburgh earlier this year showed the ALF had become much more professional. Using new homemade devices, one lab was burned to the ground and a fireman suffered permanent liver damage. No one has yet been caught. That would have been planned to absolutely totally minimise any risk to human, to human beings, to firemen. Firemen, their instructions are to not risk their lives when it comes to uh, protecting property. No lives are at risk, protecting property. But I think they had some information that there might have been some security guards on site. And there wasn't, because it would have been planned in such a way that there were no people anywhere near. And that's the animal liberation from non-violent direct action. Well, I would like them to join my men and make that statement. I'd like them to meet the men that fought the fire at Bush. I'd like them to meet the men that fought the fire at Roslyn. We have an entirely different opinion. We think they're idiots and the idiots that are out to get and hurt people. They say that they're not there to hurt anybody, that they're only there to help animals. Well, I'm not an animal, and I don't need them to help me in that kind of way, nor do I need them to put the firefighter at risk. He has a hard enough job. He's got a one in 10 chance of being injured during his firefighting career, and all that they have done is increase that, and in fact, have took out four of our firefighters in one morning. That, I think, is the highest loss we've ever had at any fire. A fireman dies, our cause dies, and uh, there's no doubt about it. The day after I condemned the incidents in Edinburgh, there was a phone call received by my office manager here, and he was told that if I didn't shut my mouth, our office would be the next to be torched. I mean, if that's animal rights people, then what the hell are they? Scientists like Professor Ted Evans, who experiment on animals, have been the targets of some of the most dangerous attacks. He's searching for a cure for deafness. One morning, Professor Evans opened his front door to find a bomb on the step. Now, every day, he checks to make sure no devices have been planted under his car. The individual who deposited it either uh, delivered it late or didn't set it off at the pr proper time, and it would have gone off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It would have blown the, the door in and caused uh, a lot of fire damage. Putting a bomb on a doorstep when they know that uh, a paper boy is going to be putting something through the letterbox and the postman likewise, uh, that's, that I just cannot understand that mentality at all. But it's typical of all terrorists. They're cowards and they don't care a fig for innocent life. Yeah, well, the people who actually done that, who, who actually planted the bomb or whatever, they must have looked into it and they must have felt that it was the right thing to do, to actually threaten him, to scare him, to, to jolt him out of his, you know, of his way of thinking. Many scientists have given up their work through being threatened. What would you say the, to... The, uh, the Fur Review, the, the Fur magazine, that's recently stopped publishing because they received a letter bomb, not primed to go off it, but it's just the basic threat of it. But we're not dealing with it. It's not a game of cricket. We're not, you know, it's not like a stamp collector and everything like that. There's millions of animals dying every day. You know, it really is a, such a serious issue. Do you have a fear for the future? That's a difficult one. Uh, it, it inevitably, one, one does. The, the bomb incident, for example, brought us up with, with a severe jolt, although we uh, immediately decided to continue doing the work we were doing. But nobody likes to work in this sort of uh, environment that could engender fear uh, and suffering.
Real suffering was narrowly avoided earlier this year at Bristol University when the activists used high explosives for the first time. An entire floor of the University Senate House was destroyed and £100,000 worth of damage was caused. Terrorism must be fought and pushed back wherever it shows up, whether it's bombs in jets or bombs in universities or people shot as they're getting into cars. After Bristol, the ALF warned that they were now prepared to kill for their cause. The current bombing campaign has triggered the biggest ever ALF police hunt. Throughout the animal rights movement, mail is being opened, phone calls are intercepted, and people are being followed. Every police force now monitors animal rights groups, and intelligence is collated in Scotland Yard by a newly formed department, the Animal Rights National Index. These Arnie documents give detailed background information on three suspected leading activists, David Callender, Serena Rowlands, and Kevin Lee. They also warn of a possible takeover of the large mainstream animal rights groups by extremists. Until two years ago, the Animal Liberation Front was high profile. Their press offices distributed videos of their law-breaking activities. They even formed a 3,000-strong ALF supporters group, supposedly separate from the activists themselves. The police launched attacks on the press office and the supporters group. Uh, seizing as much literature as they could in the hope that they would close the supporters group down which in turn people or so they thought people would start thinking that the ALF had been closed down by the Rackham's trial. Uh, it didn't work, uh, the ALF supporters group and the ALF is still growing, more actions are carried out each day and more members are joining the supporters group each day. A new bulletin published in June shows the ALF supporters group is back in business, soliciting contributions and encouraging support for animal rights prisoners. The supporters group funds are held at this branch of the Cooperative Bank in London. Thousands of pounds in donations are currently passing through the account. One of the signatures controlling the cash is that of the jailed ALF founder, Ronnie Lee. This is a treat for you, isn't it, your afternoon tea? Come on, Jeremy. Amongst Britain's animal lovers, there's no shortage of those willing to fund terrorism. Sylvia O'Brien has given over a thousand pounds to the ALF. Jenny. Do you know what that money is used for? Yes, I do. It's, it's, some of it's used for, for fines when they're flying. And also, they, they need petrol, don't they, to get about the various activities they go on. Yes, that sort of thing. They don't have it for themselves. They don't use it for themselves, believe me. Do you In think fact, they use very little for themselves. They're so dedicated to their cause. Do you think that any of that money is used to buy material for incendiary device campaigns? What do you mean, my money? How can you say my... Uh, uh, the contributions of people like yourself. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, I don't know how it's used. We don't get a statement. I just give it. I don't... Would you be happy for your money to be used in that way? If it's going to help the animals, yes. If it's going to help the animals from their... their... Yes, I would. Yes. <laughs> This recent rock video shows a laboratory ray. Sympathy for ALF violence is growing throughout today's youth culture, and Morrissey is one of Britain's most influential rock stars. Do you think that your video was endorsing law-breaking? Well, um, if there wasn't a law against it, it wouldn't be law-breaking. I find the law on these matters so, um, so fascist and silly that I can't really take it seriously anyway. So to me, it's not like breaking the law. Twenty years ago, the battle for animal rights was fought with bugles and horns. Today, the weapons are high explosives, guns and firebombs. The damage now runs into millions of pounds and attacks grow more violent with each month and no one knows where it will all end. The people have gone out, they've broke the law, it's got the headlines, it's got people talking, we've got millions of vegetarians in the country now, the fur trade's on its last legs. We've had like women's liberation movement at the time, black liberation came to the forefront, animal liberation, our time has come now. You did not create your whip, you swung it at my girlfriend. If someone dies, our cause dies with it. And these characters who are doing this should know that by now, they're not, hopefully they're not, totally stupid, but they're acting that way and they've got to get their act together and stop what they're doing and do something more constructive.
Yes. Come on, get out. Get Start hitting people. Put the cameras in. That's my daughter. Well, don't send her in front then. No, you'd have more otters to kill, wouldn't you? And poke down and bloody be cruel too. People like you, you just... You make me so sick. Animal rights! One, two, three! Shame on you!